He's brilliant in Game of Thrones. He's about to experience the Game of Couches. Will you go crazy for Mr Kit Harrington? <laughs> It's fantastic to have you on the show. You know what a fan I am of Game of Thrones. I think we might have one or two Game of Thrones fans in the audience. <laughs> so we won't talk about Game of Thrones. Instead, <laughs> well, we will, but we'll get to that in a minute. First of all, though, what's exciting is you're going to be on stage here in the West End in Dr Faustus. Yes. Uh, the preview start next Saturday, and then you're in it for about three months, I think. Yeah, that's correct. Now, yeah. I'm vaguely familiar with the play. Not that I know it's, it's an old play. It's one of Shakespeare's contemporaries. Already. Are they changing it? Are they updating it for the modern age? Or is it a kind of classic version? It's not in any way like the kind of classic period play that you think you'd go and see with the kind of roughs and baggy tights. It's very contemporary. It's very modern. It's cinematic. It's, it's exciting. It's got bodily fluids flying about all over the place. I get my arse out. I mean, it's wow. just... You know, <laughs> The bodily fluids flying about. Yeah. That happened before or after you get your ass out. Is that <laughs> a... <laughs> so the story, as yes, I understand it, it's a man who makes a deal with the the classic figure of of Lucifer, of the devil himself. Is that right? That's right. It's about a man who summons summons Mephistopheles, the devil's right hand man, and then makes a, a deal with it. And we've we've actually been rehearsing this in a church which is not the most comfortable place to be summoning the devil. And it was on Good Friday we were doing wow. this. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, was a church service going on around you while you were doing this? <laughs> no, there was one next door. Oh, wow. And a church warden came in <laughs> at one point, I'm not joking, to tell us to be quiet, just as I was going, Beelzebub Lucifer! <laughs> and she kind of poked her head in and went, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you keep it down a bit, love? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and so, but do you get nervous? But I went to see uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, mm -hmm. uh, and he was in Frankenstein, and I got one of the nights when he was playing the Frankenstein monster, and he bursts out of some sort of cocoon at the beginning. Did you see this play? I didn't Probably. see it. I'd love to he see it. He bursts out of a cocoon at the beginning, and he's been naked in the cocoon. Mm -hmm. And I noticed in the cocoon that he was touching himself. <laughs> before he came out. And I asked him after, I said, well, am I correct, Benedict? I thought I saw you. He says, I do. He said, because you don't want to come out with nothing. <laughs> I've heard it's a rubber band. If you put a rubber band round the, um, you, we maybe let's not go into this. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but you've done theatre work before, of course. Yes, in yes. Past, you were in Warhorse for quite a while, weren't you? That was my first job. I was in Warhorse for a year. Yeah. Okay. Did you? You had to play a regional character. Were you from? Were you from Devon or from Dorset or somewhere? Oh, he's from Devon. Devon. Oi. 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 Could you do some of the accent for us? That's about all I can do. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago. Say, say, I, I was the horse. I was the horse. No, no, I mean, say I was the horse. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> You're speaking to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but that was. <laughs> that's, uh, but that's enough. That's more than enough. That was great. <laughs> uh, now, the thing I imagine would be on your mind right there before going to the stage, yeah. now you're going back. And of course, you're going back with the fame that Game of Thrones has brought you. Mm. And there'll be uh, a group of people, I'm sure, who go along to see it because they love you in Game of Thrones, which, mm -hmm. of course, is healthy and it's good. But I know, once again, if we go back to Benedict and other actors who've made that leap from a super popular TV or film thing onto stage, you get fans coming along who are there not necessarily to see the production, more to see the lead, mm -hmm. uh, and they get a bit carried away. Are you concerned about that? Are you worried that they're going to get, you know, they're, they're there for Game of Thrones, but obviously it's not Game of Thrones? I think that's the brilliant thing. That's... That's why I'm in this play, is to bring a whole new group of people into the theatre that maybe don't go to the theatre very often, that are, that are more TV fans or film fans. And that's, if I can bring that, that's a wonderful thing. And it's actually, strangely, in the vein of Thrones in many ways. It's, it's very dark and it can, it can be quite gruesome. And, because there, there are yeah. illusions on stage as well. Is that why? Is that tired? That's not in the original version as such, or is it? The, you, no, you it's, do... there's a contemporary... So the middle section of the play, people sometimes think wasn't written by Marlowe. It's a very strange middle section of the play. And it's a, 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 a playwright called Colin Teven who's adapted it and modernised it. And it, it, the modern section, he becomes a kind of a magician in the vein of David Blaine or Copperfield or something. So, like a modern day, but a big showman? Yeah, big showman. Are there illusions like, like we would see in a magic show, then? Has it got yeah, that element? there's some fantastic ones. I won't tell you what they are, because that would be spoiling it. But... Yeah, and why come on a talk show if you're going to tell us anything? Exactly. <laughs> but there are, there are illusions. 
don't want to give you spoilers, Tom. <laughs> I know you and spoilers, but your whole life must have been, I would have thought, for the last few one years now. One big spoiler. Well, but one big spoiler alert, because yeah. you must get that all the time, don't you? People just saying, what's going to happen next? Do you know how it ends? And, and those kind of questions. Yeah, I get it. I mean, there's a guy at my, there's a guy at my Sainsbury's. I go... <laughs> <laughs> I love this man. He's, he's very dear to my heart. What section is he working? He's by, he, he sees me come in and he goes straight to the till and he bars everyone else from, you know, he just <laughs> flicks them across until I get there and he goes, you ain't dead, did it? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, I, I am, I am dead. And he goes, nah, you ain't dead. <laughs> and, then, and you're like, how do you know? I, I'm, I'm, I'm dead. And he goes, you'd be crying if you were dead. <laughs> This happens every time I go. Well, he, he has a point because you would be sad if you were dead. <laughs> yeah, but he's just. I think he thinks I'll be weeping in the street for the yeah. rest of my life. That I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> um, uh, so, when you are out and about, I imagine that's not just Sainsbury's. That's pretty much everywhere. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. The last year has been quite intense in that way. We uh, we did something which I hope you forgive us for. We hit a camera on you. Yes. Well, we hit a camera on you to see what we... You didn't know about this, did you? No, I had no idea, Jonathan. To see what he has to deal with on a regular basis, and, uh, and this is it. This is him arriving at the studio today. Check this out. Oh, mate. Are you dead? Are you dead? Are you dead? Are you dead? Come on, tell me. Are you dead? Are you dead? Come on. Come on. Dead, 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 Can I ask you something? Are you dead? Are you dead? Oh, isn't you that dead guy from that show? <laughs> whoa, 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 stop there, stop there. I thought you was dead. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry, aren't you the, um, the dead guy? <laughs> there, you go. there we are. That's, uh, that's... Uh, Pitt was just saying, that's, that's pretty much every day. That's, that is, that's very accurate okay. to my life. It's even, scary watching that, thinking even that the that's, urinal a, scene. that's a spoof. That's actually... You, you say you get accurate. it in toilets as well? Yeah, the guy at the urinal I have all the time. That one man? The man that goes... <laughs> 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 so, uh, how do you do it, though? How do you keep the secrets that you, you must know about the show going forward? Mm -hmm. how, how do you manage to, to get through it without giving that away? I guess you have... A few close people you can talk to about it. Not that it's like therapy, you need to get it off your chest, but I guess there are some people you can trust, or do you not speak to anyone? I am no longer involved in the show. Oh, yeah. So any secrets that are with the show, I don't actually know anymore. This is, this, so it becomes very easy, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. So you're looking at me like you don't believe me. This is gonna be, it's going to be so relieving when people actually see the show and realise that I don't come back. So, we should set up for the sort of three or four people in the world who haven't been watching Game of Thrones. You were, you were, you were killed. You, Jon Snow was killed at the end of season five. Mm. And so you're kind of out of the show. Yes, very much so. But you were back filming in Belfast while they were I was playing a corpse. I was there for a little bit. I was there for about a month. A month or two months. It was always spread over a bit. Yeah, cos when you're lying dead, you've got to film <laughs> They can't it's actually, that it's, day, it's, can they? It's, I won't tell you how many episodes I'm lying dead, but it's enough that I was out there for quite a while. Wow, so there's a lot. So your body's lying dead quite a lot yes. in lots of different scenes. Yes. <laughs> You're just walking past all the other years again. How did you get there? <laughs> it's going to be so satisfying when you see it. Someone's putting a realize... bottle away. What's this on the shelf? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you is dead, ain't you, mate? You know? And you realise that I was telling the truth the whole time. Do you get, the, you get this from famous people as well, not just... Uh, uh, Muggles. Yeah, I got this. <laughs> I got this. Um, I get this from everybody. Me and my brother went to a, to the. We got invited to Wimbledon recently, Lovely. as you do, and um, uh, and we got sat with. It was a, a royal was hosting. We didn't know which royal it was, and it was the Duchess of Cornwall, and she was hosting it. And we got sat with her, me and my brother, and she leant over the table and said, "Are you dead?" <laughs> No word of a lie. <laughs> I wish she'd said, is one dead? That would have been dead. <laughs> uh, Game of Thrones is pretty much, uh, I get it's, it's one of the biggest shows in the world. I mm. would say that and Walking Dead are probably the two biggest global uh, shows, I would have thought. Uh, and you must have uh, opened a lot of doors for you, I guess. You've met a lot of people who are famous fans. I know you've met Stevie Wonder. He was, was he a fan of the show when you met Stevie him? Stevie Wonder, yeah. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if he was. Oh. I asked him just the, the most awful question, uh, which still haunts me at night time, which... <laughs> I just asked him if he'd seen the show. Oh. <laughs> it's just the thing not to ask Stevie Wonder. I'm sure he probably gets that almost as much as you get, is you dead, you know, so... <laughs> uh, OK, so, uh, you're a successful young actor, OK? Mm. And, I, and I hope you're enjoying the success of that. How, how do you treat yourself? For example, have you bought yourself a house now on the back of Game of Thrones, or do you still rent a place? Have you done it up in a nice style? What, what, what's your kind of domestic setup? Oh, Thrones was, was very, you know, it's what every young actor kind of dreams of, getting something like that. And, yeah, it, it, it puts some money in the bank to go and... Buy a house. So you yeah. got a house? Good. I've got a house, yeah. Designed inside, classical, uh, modern, uh, what does it look like? Now, I have a friend who helps me design it and I never listen to her. And um, I should because it, my sense of style is atrocious. I, I thought, my bedroom, I thought I kind of set up in what I thought was going to kind of look like a sophisticated gentleman's club. Yeah. And ended up looking like a really bad set from Thrones. Oh, really? I've got a massive leather bed. Wow. How awful is that? That leather bed is pretty awful. <laughs> that, that's, see, that's exactly why a young man shouldn't be allowed to furnish his own house. Shouldn't be allowed to furnish my own house. So when you saw the leather bed, why did you think, I want to buy a leather bed? I don't know. I thought, I thought, I thought in some ways it would be kind of grand and beautiful, and now I have to apologise for it every time. Because in other ways in. it's just sort of creepy and wiped clean. Yeah. <laughs> the sheets on there. <laughs> it's not got leather sheets. What? Well... <laughs> I, I don't think they make leather shoes <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, so um, we have some uh, questions, cos obviously a lot of people, there's a lot of speculation online, that's what I was saying. Yeah. And I thought you might want to see some of the, uh, the speculation. I know you can't necessarily answer, but I thought we could ask you to answer yes, if you feel you can. Yeah. No, if you feel you can answer that without giving too much away. Sure. Or you could just say something like, I know nothing. OK. Good game. Let's go. Uh, but we are going to add an element of, of uh, fun to this interrogation. What we have the this? stone of truth here. Okay. <laughs> Here's the stone of truth. <laughs> you have to put your hand in the mouth of the stone of truth and hold on to what we're calling its tonsils. All right. And the tonsils, completely autonomous to anything I'm doing, will respond <laughs> with a small electric shock depending on the quality of your answer. <laughs> OK, you want to put your hand in the stand of truth? OK. And grasp the dongle of perception. OK. OK, you're good there. I'm good on this stage. All right, here we go. OK. Are you dead? <laughs> yes. Do you feel that? Actually gives me a shock. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, how bearable was the shock? Uh, 5. OK, I can turn this up a bit. <laughs> so the question was, are you dead? I forgot the answer. Well, ask it again. Are you dead? Yes. <laughs> I can turn it down. I can turn it down. Is is that, is that right? OK, I'll turn it down a bit. Can I see your dead face, please? <laughs> I'm going to let you get away with that one. That's a good one. Is there any nudity in the next series? I know nothing. OK, I'm going to let that go. <laughs> Are you playing a dead body in the next series? Yes. OK. <laughs> Do you...? become a white walker? No. Do you come back as Jeremy Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> no. See, that, uh, that, I think that's a yes, the way you responded then. OK. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Kit Harrington answered the question successfully. <laughs> Let me show you what that was. It was good. We, we made this, but the only thing we could find that could be operated was uh, described online as an anal stim.
If they shaped... You'd be amazed, though, because second-hand, they're pretty cheap, those things. <laughs> It really wasn't a lot of money. We gave it a wipe off and everything. <laughs> Seriously painful. Kit, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Great to have you here. Um, I'm so looking forward to Dr. Faustus. So I'm going to come along to one of the previews. They start next Saturday, the 9th of April, mm -hmm. at the Duke of York Theatre, and you're just in it for a few months, so make sure you get to see it while you can. I can't wait to see you back as a White Walker in the new series of Game of Thrones. <laughs> you're going to stick around for the rest of the show, I hope. Of course. No more electric shocks, I promise you. Mr. Kit Harrington, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>